Oh howdy all, grab yourself a beer, it's time for some Path of Exile discussion. So today is day 16 of Scourge League spoiler season, and it's a pretty quiet day today except for one big, 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 big piece of news. And that is that version 2.9.0 of Path of Building has been released. This means that if you are someone who likes using Path of Building to either make builds or to tinker around with other people's builds, then you can now do so with all the publicly known information about 3.16. Fair warning, there'll be the odd mistake in it, there'll be the odd bug. These things will get ironed out over the next few days, and by the time that the league is starting, Path of Building should be probably at a point where it's 99.5% correct. Uh, there's always just a couple of little interactions because the game is such a complex, complex entity, and there are so many interactions that sometimes one or two of them will break in any simulation. So, in terms of other news, the first thing that came up is that private leagues for Scourge are now available. Now, this doesn't mean that those private leagues are playable. What it means is that if you are intending to run a private league, then you can do all of the administrative setup work of that now. Uh, this is just a time saver. You will still start playing the Scourge League at the same time as everyone else. It's not some sort of, you know, pay to jump the queue or anything like that. Uh, you'll be joining the same queue as everyone else. The difference is that you'll be able to get all of admin work involved in setting up a private league done now. One of the things that's really good about private leagues is that they can avoid some of the drawbacks of public trade league where you're competing with trade sharks and outright cheaters like bot software and things like that. You don't have any of that you usually in a small economy private league. And so that means that there's often much more of a sense of camaraderie in private leagues, and that's why they're really good. Plus you can also add hard mods if you want to do that and make some sort of monster of an event where you know, you've know you got all of the scourge mechanics, but you've also got monsters having onslaught. Uh, and on top of monsters having onslaught, monsters can have less multiple projectiles and additional life, all sorts of things like that. There's there's a limit to the number of difficulty mods that can be used, uh, but there's a fair bit of flexibility available there as well. Next, there are a couple of little changes to the patch notes. These are all summarized at the bottom of the patch notes, uh, but the key things that have come up has been that there's been just an addition to the patch notes specifically about some of the changes to Flash Breach. Uh, Flash Breach no longer grants 10 additional rare monsters. It now instead grants breaches have 30% increased area and density, so 69% more monsters will be present in a breach. So that's pretty significant and it's neither really a win nor a loss I don't think overall, uh, it's just a little bit of a change to how Flash Breach works. Uh, it might mean though that Flash Breach gives a less of the Breachstone Splinters. The other changes here, Brotherhood in Exile now drops in the Chateau map. That's one of the Divination cards that was added fairly recently. I think it used to be in Villa. And Purifying Flame picked up a little bit more than 10% more damage than it had before. Uh, so that's a skill that's getting a bit better. Uh, Purifying Flame Mines has been pretty good at various points in the game in recent memory, so that may be something worth investigating. Next, there were two other things that were added. Prince of Darkness is a new divination card for Elegant Hubris. Elegant Hubris is one of the Timeless Jewels, and there's a number of things that can be quite solid with this. Elegant Hubris is the Timeless Jewel that basically turns off all of the small nodes in the area uh, that it's socketed in, but empowers and transforms all of the notables. And many of the notables can be really good. What this is going to work really, really well with is the new amulet Strangle Gasp. If you get an elegant hubris that you can put like at the edge of your passive tree, uh, somewhere that placing it is not going to wreck any important sections of your tree, then you may get access to a whole bunch of interesting notables within the rad radius of the, of the elegant hubris that aren't worth pathing to normally, but that Strangle Gasp you can possibly allocate via the use of that amulet. That's going to be interesting in that you'll see Strangle Gasps entering the economy that have got four very, very, very different annoyance that don't seem to have any synergy with each other. Like you might have something that's got a mace node in one spot, an evasion rating one in another, and thinking, and, and a bow one here, and thinking, why on earth is anyone wanting all of these? Uh, but that's the reason. It'll be because the Prince of Darkness, or just Elegant Hubris in general, has created an interesting set of notables that they can get from their passive from a specific spot in their passive tree with that specific seed on elegant hubris. 
Uh, lastly was Vampiric Link the Teaser. This is one of the new Link skills, one of the new types of support skills, and essentially it means that Life Leech, it empowers Life Leech tremendously, uh, but it empowers it for someone else. Your Life Leech effects are not removed at full life, and they apply their recovery to the linked target instead of applying it to you. Maximum Oh, sorry, Link Target's maximum total life recovery per second from Leech is equal to yours. So if you are a character that is specialized in Life Leech and you are hitting monsters, then this can provide a really significant defensive boost for another player, but at, of course, the same cost as all of the other Link skills, uh, which is that if they die, you die as well as the person that initiated the Link. And this one's really interesting. I'm uh, keen to see how it works. I think it's something that some slayers might use if they are partying with a player that they really trust and they really know. They know that player's solid, then they may well decide to uh, use a vampiric link to empower their ally further. And that's an interesting option. I don't think it's going to be very useful other than on a slayer. Anyways, uh, this is a short one today. There's not much information. Uh, one last point though is that Bex did confirm, as we mentioned earlier with the divination card, the Brotherhood in Exile is being changed there. They are also working on a new drop location for the Divination card, the Cheetah. Uh, this was by email to me. I'd mentioned it to Bex because I knew that the Divination card in question dropped solely from Parandus content, and with Parandus content being removed, it was going to be impossible to get. And so Bex said that there's nothing to announce yet, but they are aware of it, and it will have a new drop location. That's all I've got. May your Valorbs have interesting results.